Good morning. This is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series, the Kingdom Living Bible Study Course, and the Pocket Guides, and now available for free, seven e-books at smashwords.com. Today I want to par- share with you something that is very controversial, and I love controversial, and I can stand the heat. <laughs> so here goes. Christians and sex. What does God allow according to the word? So I'm going to dig right in. I'm going to start in the beginning. Now, the reason I'm qualified to to teach about this is, um, well, I'm not quite sure why, but what God has shown me is over the years, because I'm a a minister or and because I minister over the internet, and I have had several couples ask me and my husband to counsel them in marriage counseling, and also. I've had several people ask me questions in what is permissible in uh, uh, sex within the context of a marriage. So I'm going to touch this forbidden subject, and (laughs) uh, I'm going to share what God has shared with me, and I'm also going to give you some tips how to make a great marriage greater. And that is because I've been married 27 years. I've known my husband six weeks before we ran away to Las Vegas and got married. And six months later, we sold and gave away everything and rode a bicycle built for two, not a motorcycle, a bicycle built for for two across the United States, evangelizing and witnessing the people. The 700 Club contacted us twice uh, to, to interview us and to do a story on us, but we were too busy bicycling and living life, having babies afterwards that we didn't really follow through on that and uh, too bad because we're going to eventually write a book about it and uh, I'm believing that we eventually will be on the 700 Club sharing our story. So here goes um, what God has shared with me and showed me about sex and the Christian. The first thing that uh, he showed me that I need to start with is the first mention first mentions in the Bible is a rule of the first time a subject is introduced in the Bible is really the foundation of what that subject is about is really the basis and the truth of that subject so if you have a question about something you go back to the first time that that is mentioned in the Bible and you have all kinds of hints and clues um, on what the definition is, what the reality is, uh, just information about that subject. So let's go back to the Garden of Adam and Eve. And uh, in the beginning, God created Adam. And God wanted to have a partner for Adam. So right there, it shows you that being single is not God's best or original plan for men and women. Um, God created men, and then he decided that it wasn't good for men to be alone. So he looked for a suitable mate among all the animals on the earth, okay? And none was found. So that shows you that bestiology bestiology was not in God's original creation. In other words, having sex with an animal was not God's best because in Genesis 1, when God was looking for a suitable mate for Adam, he brought all the animals to Adam to name. And none of those animals were suitable for a mate. So God put Adam to sleep and he made Eve and he brought Eve to Adam and and, uh, said that she and him, uh, somewhere in Psalms I believe it is, it says that God created man and woman so that they would procreate and they would give God children that would worship God and would follow after God. So the original creation for a man and a woman, not two women, not two men, was for procreation so that they could create and he made them so that they would fit together and the two would become one. Now two males and two females cannot become one. Okay, so um, that if you go back to the beginning of creation, God created one man and one woman so they could procreate, so they could become family. Now, if you step forward in time, um, God has a son that is 
you'll see that God finds that family is very important because he created, he has a, he is a son and a father. He has a son and a father. Family is important. And he sent Jesus to die for all of our sins that those who receive Jesus, the gift of him paying for a lifetime of sin, become adopted as his son. So you can see that family is important to him. Children are important to him. God has no grandchildren. He only has children. Each person he loves as much as you love your children, he loves them more because they're also his children. Okay, so if you go back in time, God created one man and one woman, and not one man and one animal, and one woman and one animal, or two women or two men, or two women and one man, or so forth. He did not create it. So right there it shows you that bestiality, bestiality was not God's idea of uh, what a family should be. And God's perfect idea was one man and one woman in the Garden of Eden. So having set that foundation, let me go on to what the three rules are that God shared with me to share with you. And this is a subject that I have been trying to avoid preaching on for a long, long time, but God has just has been pushing me to, to teach on this subject. So um, the first rule is in sex and marriage. First of all, not a rule, but the first thing that I think I already established pretty well is that marriage is between one woman and one man. Uh, no matter how the world describes marriage, that's how God described it in the book of Genesis. Okay, so having set that foundation, what sex can a married couple have that is approved by God? Well, we can have lots of fun. Um, there's really only three rules, and rule number one is in your sex play, in your sex with your married spouse, um, you can have any kind of sex that number one does not involve imagining past relationships or imagining and remembering or creating new sex um, images of someone other than your current spouse uh, or not creating imaginations and images of anybody other than your spouse, no animal, not thinking about um, an animal noise or an animal having sex with a person or an a, a person having sex with someone else. No kind of imagination, no kind of sound, image, smell, taste, or whatever that you are using to remind you of an event that ever, that ever happened before with somebody or something other than your spouse. Okay, so we got that clear. No sex that, that you use uh, photography or um, movies that are of somebody else besides you and your current spouse. Okay, number one rule. Okay, number two rule is you can do anything to each other that does not physically hurt either of your bodies. Okay, number three rule you can do anything to and with each other that both of you agree upon. Now, Here's where it gets a little bit sticky, okay? If your wife doesn't like to do a uh, certain sex act with you, first of all, life, if it's not hurting you, if you think it's gross, if you had some kind of experience with this in the past, forget your past. This is the only thing that you should be thinking about is your relationship with your spouse right now. Don't be afraid to try new things. You need to be open to trying new things that do not hurt either of your bodies and that you can agree on. When you're in love with somebody, you'll be willing to try things that do not break the three rules. Husband, the same thing. If it brings her pleasure, and if it's not breaking any of those rules, then don't be afraid to try it, okay? And then, so those are basically the three rules. Now, you can do role playing, as long as you're not role play playing to, uh, to pretend that you are a certain person, I mean, you can role play in the sense of uh, you are uh, role playing and uh, you are the male, a male man, but not 
your meal. So basically role playing is okay as long as you're not role playing a live person. You are just role playing with with your spouse uh, and creating these these characters. So basically those are the three rules. Um, now here are some thoughts that uh, might get you upset. Now we know 